Hello, welcome. It is time for our Tuesdays with Tina. And today we're going to be talking about some tips to help you stay stable. I can speak. Some tips to help you stay stable while giving your injections. So storms that are happening here in the Pacific Northwest. I'll tell you, I had a very intense drive into work uh, this morning on my way to uh, teach my hygiene students. So uh, it was one of those moments where you just like grin and bear it and like I, was, I had to remind myself to breathe one of those things. So um, so like I said, as, as we are coming in, thank you for saying you like my glasses. Hello, Instrument Fozzie. And thank you for like, I like my glasses too. They actually inspired the painting of my uh, office, which uh, is still waiting to do production in. So I'm really excited about that. All right, so Facebook friends over here, hello. I'm sorry, but for some reason, Facebook isn't being cooperative with me right now. So I apologize. So some things to be thinking about when giving injections, you know, oftentimes uh, people avoid them, right? Because they're just a little nervous, they're scared. And a lot of it comes down to like just being shaky, right? It's like, oh my gosh, I have a syringe in my hand and I've, I'm putting this in near somebody's face. It's near my hand. Hi, Chewy. Happy to see you. Um, it is one of those things where you're just like, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Like, how am I going to make this happen? So um, again, hold on. I'm going to pause Facebook friends. Sorry about all of the connectivity issues. Hopefully you're able to see this. Okay. Uh, so uh, I it was one of those things where I think a lot of hygienists avoid giving injections because of they're nervous and not knowing how to uh, stay uh, stable and the shakes that happen with it that that is a big huge concern for a lot of people. So I wanted to share with you some of the tips that I share with my hygiene students, for those that go through my certification courses, for those that do my hands-on anesthesia refresher courses, just wanted to share some of these tips with you that you can employ in your everyday practice. And this actually might be something that you can even employ in your instrumentation techniques when, you, when you're working with your patients, if you've ever had moments where you're just a little uh, um, unsure of, of what you need to be doing. So one of the things, and this is just ergonomics, 101 is if you want to make sure that you're stable and that you have uh, all of the confidence is to make sure that your elbows stay nice and tight towards your side, right? The closer our bodies are uh, and you know, our, our arms are to our bodies, the easier it is to, to keep ourselves stable. Hello, Alma. Nice to see you. Long time no see. Uh, <laughs> happy to see you. Yes, the time has changed. I, I The time is changing a little bit for this. Depends upon what my work day is like. So tip one for staying stable is keep your arms nice and close to your side. Keep your elbows close to your side. This is, you know, great for general ergonomics, but especially for your local anesthesia administration. It will help you quite a bit to keep your elbows by your side. The other thing that you can do if you're struggling with keeping your elbows by your side, especially when you're injecting on the patient's opposite side of you. So if you're right-handed and you're injecting on the left side, you know, for the maxillary arch or on the right side or right side for the middle arch, or if you're left-handed and you're vice versa. Oftentimes, if you stand, that gets you a little bit higher, allows you to keep your arms nice and close to your sides, and then you can hinge forward from your hips and you can stay nice and close to your patient. Now, if you are new to the syringe sling and lifestyle and are in the process of learning this, you may not be able to stand when you're giving your injections because your instructor has to be able to see what you're doing. And if your instructor is short like me, I live in the 5'2 life, right? I live the five foot two inch life. Um, oftentimes I am not able to uh, be high enough to see what my students are seeing. So I kind of have to have them sit down. So. But if you have been certified and you've been on the on the syringe sling inside of life for a while and you're finding that you want to have a little bit of extra stability, stand up and that'll keep help keep your arms nice and close to your side as well. Other thing you can do is uh, create finger rests for yourself. So when I say creating finger rests, and I'm just going to kind of use my pen here as an example, right? So this you know, kind of chunky blue part right here. We're just going to pretend that that is the syringe, 
When you're creating a finger rest, this is the part of your syringe. You can touch that part of your syringe. So when you're retracting, you can rest your knuckle down onto the syringe. Maybe when you're coming into the patient's mouth, you kind of create a kickstand, allowing yourself to have a moment to pause and rest and we're like, <sighs> tip number, was that number four is breathe. Take a pause and breathe, but create yourself a little finger rest, and then you can pause and take a breath and, and move forward. So that is one of the things you can do. So create a little finger rest for yourself. Um, and I will show you some pictures. As, as you see, some of my pictures that come through on social media, through my lectures, uh, you'll see uh, where I have different stabilization points. And any of the, if you're a part of one of my courses, you will see videos, you'll see me using my thumb or my finger as a stability point for those injections, especially when you're aspirating. Oftentimes when we're aspirating, our syringe tends to move around quite a bit. So creating a finger rest and a stabilization point helps keep you stable when you're going to aspirate. So you're not pulling the syringe out or you're not going back in a little too deep. So just a little tip for you on that. And like I said, pause and breathe. If you find that you are just a little overwhelmed with everything, if you take a moment to pause and breathe and a nice inhale through your nose and an exhale out like that, that will help calm your nerves. It actually helps calm your patient's nerves too. Like when you're feeling that uptight anxiousness, your patient is probably feeling that too. So if you say, okay, we're just gonna take a nice deep breath, take a nice pause, and as one of the trainers that I work with reminded me, breathing like you are um, trying to fog a mirror, like actually doing that type of a breath can really help kind of relax our nervous system and, and help get the nerves out. And it will help our patients too. Okay, it will help our patients. Okay, so I have one more tip for you, but before we go through that, a couple of reminders of the tips for stability. Keep your elbows by your side. You can stand up, which will also help keep your elbows by your side. Uh, create a finger rest for you. Even on those moments where you have to have your arms out and away from you, if you have a finger rest or a thumb rest created for yourself, that will help you stay stable. Um, and then pause and breathe. Pause and breathe. And my last tip for you, and I said, no, and maybe it seems kind of odd, I don't know, but think about <laughs> All the different times in your life that you get the shakes. Maybe it's when you've had way too much coffee, right? If you've had way too much coffee, you've got the coffee shakes. Or maybe it's been a hot minute since you had a meal and you're starting to go through the, you know, the blood sugar withdrawal kind of shakes, okay? So think about your food and beverage choices around the time frame that you're giving your injections so that way you can stay nice and relaxed and shake free. So maybe one of those things is that you just have to have a, a little bit of a, maybe a protein beverage or even drinking some water beforehand to kind of fill your stomach up and, and let your body release some of its own uh, relaxants will help. Uh, if you are a avid coffee drinker and maybe you've over caffeinated for the day, you know, maybe think about dialing it back, you know, limit yourself, you know, research says we shouldn't drink a lot of coffee. You know, I, I think I heard on a podcast this morning to wait 90 minutes before your first cup of coffee. And I was like, Oh, I think I wait like 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> if that. So I think I've got some work to do on that coffee, waiting 90 minutes before having coffee in the morning. Um, so maybe like starting off with my first 90 minutes drinking water and then having coffee, but it's hard because I got just got my espresso machine and I want to try it. And I got home from teaching and I made myself another espresso because I wanted to play with my, my espresso machine. So and it, it tasted good. But yes, coffee, having too much coffee can give you the jitters and maybe have you talk a mile a minute as well, like kind of like I'm doing. So think about these things as you're going forward. Now, if you find that you're still having those shakes or you're feel, still feeling nervous, I highly encourage you to connect up 
with somebody that you really trust to have them talk through it with you. Maybe do a hands-on course, do a, a virtual course. Uh, you can do connect with anybody. I, I would love to connect with you, but you know, there might be somebody in your area. I can connect with you virtually, but you know, sometimes having somebody right there uh, with you, helping you work through that is very, very helpful. Okay. All right. So to recap, for those of you that has, have just joined, I'm just going to recap our five tips for keeping you stable. Uh, elbows by your side, stand up, give yourself a finger rest, breathe, pause and breathe. And then also make sure you pay attention to your food and beverage intake, making sure that you have enough food in your system that you're not going get the, get the, I need to eat shakes, right? The hypoglycemic, uh, uh, shakes or that you've had too much coffee or anything like that. Okay. Cause that can make a huge difference as well. Thank you for saying hi, Instrument Fozzy. If you want to connect, please uh, email me or message me. I'd love to connect up with you and we can talk that way for sure. I'm always, in, I'm always curious to learn more about different uh, products and companies that are out there. So feel free to, to message me. You can message me through Instagram or for, through Facebook. That'd be awesome. Okay, friends. Um, so this weekend, just to let you know, I will be getting to fly back out to Georgia and do some hands-on anesthesia courses there. Uh, believe it or not, I still get questions about can hygienists in the state of Georgia give injections? And yes, you can, Georgia. You get to do that. And um, pretty much almost everybody in the state and the nation can. Uh, we're waiting on Texas to finish uh, having their board of dentistry finalize their rules. And Delaware, Delaware is a holdout too. So hopefully they'll be coming along shortly. Okay, friends, uh, I want to leave you with uh, a little bit of our quote. So if you if you've been following along, you'll see that I have uh, I do a quote, I try my best to do a quote every Sunday. And I love this one. And it says, the most wasted of days is one without laughter. And I hope that every day you can find one little thing that uh, makes you laugh and cause you to giggle and, and just kind of go, oh, that's life. I'll say for me today, it was the cat. So I'm wearing this little sweater that has these little strings off of it. And while I'm trying to make my coffee, when I got home from work, the cat was jumping up and trying to get those strings. And I was like, oh my gosh, kitty, you're so cute. And you're going to destroy this little lounge sweater that I have. And anyway, it was cute and it made me laugh. And I hope that you find something today that makes you laugh and that your day is not wasted. So have a great week. Thank you for telling me to have a great week. And I will see you guys next Tuesday. And keep your eyes out for more hints and tips along the way. Cheers. Bye.